All right, guys, this is Jernigam here. I'm going to be doing a video on coronavirus US forced did with protests immediately pressured to repend. What well, that means, the news channel. We're going to play the video and see if you'll like it about USA, about Donald Trump. Must be. Probably anything bloody else. Anyway. President Trump says he and the Democrats are closer to agreeing to at least $300 billion in a stimulus deal to help small American businesses hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. It comes as the U.S. hit a grim milestone. Records show that 40,000 people have died from the virus. Despite the numbers, governors in several states have been under pressure following demonstrations from people demanding lockdown restrictions be lifted. Protesters are angry yep. about how measures to control the spread of coronavirus have affected their work and the economy. Some have lost their jobs as a result and say they'd rather risk catching the virus than continue like this. Our North America editor, John Sokol, raised the issue with President Trump at his latest briefing. If there were groups of people planning to protest tomorrow against the government shutdown, what would be your advice? Against the shutdown? Yeah, that they want the shutdown lifted. Should they you be allowed to lift it? Where yeah. haven't been 14 don't days. Know any people feel that way. You're allowed to protest. I mean, they, they feel that way. I watched the protest and they were all six feet apart. I mean, it was a very orderly group of people. And, uh, but, you know, some, some have gone too far. Some governors have gone too far. Some of the things that happened are uh maybe not so appropriate and i think in the end it's not going to matter because we're starting to open up our states and i think they're going to open up very well well i spoke to our washington correspondent gary o'donoghue who said president trump is defending people demonstrating against lockdowns actually on in that press conference he was asked again about it and uh, he excused them even further by saying that they had what he called cabin fever so these are, and bear in mind, these are guidelines that he himself has put in place. And he's then emp empathizing uh, with people for protesting uh, against. So, in a sense, I, say, I suppose some people would say he's trying to have it both ways. There is some suggestion that some of the protests um, have been a bit coordinated, perhaps by particular lobby groups, not all of them, but some of them. And again, the president. Uh, did he appear to empathise with some of that that nature of protest the other day in the tweet where he talked about uh, uh, liberating certain states from the restrictions they were under? So, uh, uh, you know, it's on, on the one hand, on the other, a bit this pro the game this president is playing in terms of these protests. Gary, I mean, when you look at the numbers, it's it's grim. The death toll has now gone past forty thousand. Yes, it has almost 41,000 now and, and uh, over three quarters of a million uh, cases altogether. Uh, the good news, if there is such a thing, is that hospitalizations in some of these hotspots like New York and Connecticut have started to, to come down. But there are other areas of concern as well, like Chicago and, and Boston, potentially. Uh, in the meantime, uh, people on Capitol Hill, the Senate in particular today, are trying to look at more help for small businesses because if you remember we talked a couple of weeks ago about that two trillion dollar spending package an enormous spending package that had been agreed by congress well the 350 billion dollars that was in there for small business businesses had all gone so the, the pot is empty and a lot of small businesses still haven't been helped so they're trying to negotiate yet another package on top of that to really keep people on the payroll, that's essentially what it's for. That was our Washington correspondent Gary O'Donoghue there. Well, staying in the United States, and President Trump has said the US government wants to send a team into China to investigate the coronavirus outbreak. The US and other countries have been highly critical of Beijing's handling of the crisis. It's reported that American teams want to investigate security at a laboratory in Wuhan and an unsubstantiated theory pushed in conservative media outlets in the US that the virus escaped from the facility into the surrounding population. The scientific consensus is that the virus which causes COVID-19 originated in animals, most likely in bats, and was transmitted via live animal markets.
Well, to discuss this with me further is Jamie Metzl, who was a former member of the U.S. National Security Council and is now a member of the World Health Organization's Expert Advisory Committee. He's also the author of Hacking Darwin, a book that covers the U.S.-China rivalry. Thank you very much, Jamie, for joining us here on the program. As I was saying, there is currently a, a lot of discussion about the origins of this particular virus. And of course, as the pressure mounts on China, people want to understand where it came from and, and how. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's critically important that we understand where this virus and this outbreak come from, and we have to do it quickly. And definitely, at least I, and I think most people abhor any kind of intolerance, racism, or anything like that. But asking the tough questions about where this comes from, I think, is critically important. Most scientists agree this is not some kind of bioweapon or some kind of manipulated virus, but I, I certainly believe, and I've tried to look very dispassionately at the evidence, that it's probably most likely, and it's impossible now without more evidence uh, to confirm this, that uh, this could very well be a leak from one of the, the Chinese virology institutes in, in Wuhan. I've posted a lot of the evidence on my personal website. I just think that we have to ask this. Yeah. When, you, when you talk about the evidence, um, because as, yeah. as we've said, you know, the scientists are, are overwhelmingly believe that it, it had come from uh, uh, animals and, and most likely bats. And there's a lot of talk about the live um, uh, uh, animal wet markets, as they're known. But, but just that's, talk but about that's, the evidence. That's not correct. What you just said is, is actually not correct. I think everybody, most people agree um, that this is, I mean, this is a zoonotic virus that jumped from animals and uh, to humans. The question is, did it happen in a wet market, which seems extremely unlikely, and again, I have that evidence on my site, or is this a virus that was isolated in the lab with the best of intentions of developing a vaccine, and there was yet another security breach in one of those labs? So I think that, that the way you've characterized this, I think, is, is actually not correct. So, so then based on what? I mean, I know you talk about your, your blog, but there was a Washington Post um, article just last week looking at cables from 2018. And, and of course, uh, Fox News and the president are, are, are pushing this as well, this theory about, about the labs. But just, just if you can briefly give us a sense of what sure. evidence you've got. Sure. And just to be clear, I am a progressive. The last thing that I would want to do is to support... TV's just turned itself anything, off. Most of anything... Two minutes, guys. I'm going to turn it back on again. Do apologise. Thing that what uh, President Trump is saying, or the toxins that are being spewed on on Fox News. But let's look at the at, at the evidence first. If this was a zoonotic jump. Um, how would it have happened? This was a seafood market, not a bat market, not a civet market. If it had been those animals, um, there likely would have been. They don't have pangolins indigenous in Wuhan. They would have gone from someplace else. The Lancet in January had reports uh, that there were cases of this coronavirus, uh, the pandemic, uh, not yet a pandemic, in Wuhan before the cluster in, uh, in the seafood market. Uh, and we have lots of there's lots of, uh, of information um, about not just the cover-up and how aggressive the cover-up uh, was um, but about the nature of the research that was being done in these Wuhan labs and, and I, of I, course um, you know again this is this is um, all speculation but at the heart of this Jamie is um, really the great power competition between China and, and the US which you've written extensively about and and how you now work work with a rival like China we, the United States and China must work together closely in our inter interdependent world. To ask questions about where this, this outbreak comes from doesn't mean we have to undermine our relationship with China. I mean, it's, it would be a blow if what I'm saying is, uh, is accurate. But the way I see this, imagine there's a plane crash. And then we would say, oh, we, some people may say, well, now's not the time to ask why the plane crashed. But there are planes in the air. We don't know if these pandemics come in ones or twos or threes. There could be the same problem that has brought us this pandemic could be brewing now. So if we don't know where this is coming from, if we're not asking the tough questions, shame on us. But that doesn't mean this has to play into some terrible rivalry, that this has to play into racism or intolerance. If there's one thing this virus has taught us, it's that we're all interconnected. And the only way we're going to solve our problems is by working far closer together than we have in the past. But 
asking tough questions and getting to the truth as best we can needs to be part of that process. Jamie Metzl, uh, great talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, guys, I hope you all enjoyed that video. I have taken my top off because it's hot in the house, and you may see on the TV well the, the TV uh, sort of um, crashed. I've got no T-shirt on, but oh, it doesn't really matter. It's just summer. Most people don't have the tops on, all the shirts on, and it's not against the law or anything, like I say. Um, lots of people like to take the shirt off when it's hot. That's what I do. And unfortunately, my TV crashed on me and went in the blank screen, so you probably see me with no top on on the TV, but it doesn't matter. I'm only human. I'm only showing not showing my body. There's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Everybody, everybody's got a pet, a body, so that makes any sense. So in the winter, you put more clothes on. The summer, you take more off. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And I'll be back again. Peace.